the Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this board game review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. Hello and thank you for stopping by. Today we are taking a look at Istanbul the Dice Game, which was designed by Rudiger Dorn and published by AEG. Now this is a two to floor, two to, two to floor, uh. hmm, two to four player game that takes approximately 20 to 40 minutes. Now this is a dice version of the very popular game Istanbul. But instead of moving from market to market like you would in regular Istanbul, you're going to be using dice to take special actions. You can also get tiles, which will give you special abilities and powers uh, that you can use throughout the game. You still need to collect uh, rubies to win the game. So why don't we take a look at the setup and how to play, and I'll give you my thoughts on the other side. Okay, to set up Istanbul, the dice game, each player is going to take a player aid card. Uh, does not matter which side you use. And each player will also take one crystal. Uh, then the player next to the start player, after you've determined who the start player is, will do the same thing, but they'll also get one coin. Then the next player would get two coins, the next player would get three coins. Uh, ever again, everybody starts with one crystal and then a number of coins depending on where you are in the start order. You're going to place the board in the middle of the table. We're set up for a three player game. So we're going to use the two three side. Then you're going to fill in the crystals on the board here, uh, leaving where, or, well, where you see the little red. Uh, if I can zoom in on that. You see there's a little red icon right there. So you would fill that part in with gems. Same thing with here. This is the trade market. Since we're playing a three player game, we're going to fill to this symbol here. The money track, same thing here to the three player. You're going to place one gem uh, in each of these three spaces here. And again, you're going to fill in the green and the yellow goods area as well. You're going to take the trade goods here. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Uh, separate them by color and just place those around the side of the board along with the crystals. You're going to need five, di five dice to start. You have uh, some bonus cards that you can use and your lira which you can place off to the side of the board as well. You have these mosque tiles. You are going to shuffle those and then place six of them out by the board and now you're ready to play Istanbul the dice game. Okay, the object of the game is to be the first player to collect six rubies. Once someone has collected six rubies, uh, we'll finish that round, and then whoever has the most rubies is the winner. All right, the way that a round works is first you're gonna start with an income phase. Now, income phase, you're going to get primarily from these tiles here. Nobody has any of these at the start of the game, so we're not going to go over that quite yet. Then you're going to move into the rolling phase and you're going to take the five dice and then you're going to roll them. Now once you have rolled, let's say this was our roll here, you are allowed to spend crystals to re-roll any and all dice that you want. And you can do that as many times. So I could pay this one crystal and maybe I would re-roll these three dice and Wow, that's a lot of lira. We'll talk about that in a minute here. But once you are satisfied or done with your roll, you can't re-roll anymore, uh, you will now move on to your action phase. During the action phase, you are allowed to take two actions and you must complete one action before you can start on another. All right, so what are the various actions that you can do on your turn? Well, the player aid card here, Let's go ahead. This is going to tell us all the different actions that we can take using our dice 
any of uh, the goods markers if we have collected any of these good markers and any coins or lira that we have we can use those to perform various actions so the first thing you can do if we take a look at this the first thing we can do is turn in two of the same color to receive that type of good so if i were to take these two green that i had then i could get one of these green good markers i could turn in two different colors and if i do that if i did something like that i would get a crystal so i could use that on a re-roll later i could turn in three different colors and that is going to net me uh, a brown and brown these are wild so these will count as any other color if i can turn in four different colors like that then i am able to take two goods of my choice but not the brown you can't take the wild ones if i turn in that i get two lira if i used this let's move that up a little bit this means that for every card here that uh, that I rolled, I'll get to take that many of these cards from the deck. So I would get to take two cards, flip them over, and then I would get to do one of these. I get to choose which one, which one I want to do and discard the other one. These you do immediately. We'll talk about cards more in just a second. This symbol here means that you can buy a mosque tile if you have the required number of dice. So if we take a look, here's one of those tiles here. If I had something like this, let's say I had uh, three of the blue, okay, let's say I had three blue, then I could buy this mosque tile. This, mox, this this tile is going to give me a benefit every turn during the income phase. I'm going to get a crystal at the beginning of each phase. If I didn't have three blue, I could say, for example, turn in my wild brown to use as a blue, then to get this tile. Next, you can gain a ruby by turning in a required number of goods. So that is talking about this track here. To be able to take this ruby here, you have to be able to pay the cost that is showing. So in this case, I would need to turn in a blue, red, green, and a yellow. Well, if I had a blue, red, and a yellow, let's say I had these three dice here. I'm missing the green. I could use my green good here to pick up this ruby, and now I'm one closer to the six that I need to trigger the end of the game. The next player that wants to do that action now has to pay four of these goods, one of each of the goods, and then one good of any other type. You can also get a ruby by going to the market to be able to uh, turn in the amount listed to gain a ruby. So looking at this track here, the uncovered symbol is 10 lira. So if I had 10 lira, I could change that in, take that, and now I am one ruby closer to victory or to triggering the end of the game. Uh, and now the next player who needs to do that is going to have to pay 12. All right, so let's say I had rolled that and I wanted to use those as an action, I could then also turn in a yellow and a brown wild to turn in because I need four yellow to be able to grab that gem. Now the next player is going to have to pay five to capture that gem. If you look down here on, this is right above the uh, different tiles that you can get, it states here 5x. So if you're the first player or whenever you collect five of these tiles, you will get to take one of these gems. You only get to do this once per game, but you can do any of the others as many times as you can. All right, so let's do a real quick turn example. Let's say that this was my role, okay? I now have two actions that I can take. Well, the first action I think I want to take is to buy one of these moss tiles. I cannot afford any of them because I don't have the required. The closest I have is this one. Luckily, I have a wild that I can use 
to substitute for the blue that I need so that I can get this tile. This tile is going to allow me to roll one extra dice on my turn, all right? Uh, we talked earlier about uh, this one here, which gives you a free gem at the beginning of your turn. This one, you get three lira at the beginning of your turn. And then we're not going to go over all of them, but this one says whenever you take do the take a lira action, which is, you know, uh, this symbol on the die. If you are ever, t if you ever take that action, not only do you get your two lira, but you also get one of the yellow goods. Same here, you get a blue good. Same here, you get a red good. There are a number of different tiles in the game, and the rule book will give you an example of what they did. We pretty much went over all of them here. But going back to this example, so we are going to take this tile, and when we do, we will fill it with a new one. This one says you get an extra action each turn. So I've used these dice and this good, which I would need to return to the supply, which leaves me with these two left. This allows me to draw two cards and then look at them and then decide which one I want to play and which one I want to give away. There are two types of cards. Let's take a look at them. The first type is a type where you can get a benefit, but then all the other players can also get a benefit. So on this particular card, you would get to take the top action because you're the player the, that drew the card. You would get a yellow good and three lira. All other players would get to choose either a yellow good or three lira. The other type of card that you can play is one where you just have to fulfill the requirements to be able to get it, okay? So this says that if you have rolled two of the card symbols, you get to take a brown wild. If you cannot fulfill that, you're going to get one lira regardless. Well, in our example, I did roll two. So I think out of these two cards, I would keep this one, return, discard the other one, and I would play this. I would get my brown wild for rolling that, and then I just discard it. That card is no longer in the game. So that's pretty much it. Again, you will be taking turns, uh, rolling the dice, taking up to two actions, or if you are lucky enough to have this tile, a tile like this, you can take three actions on your turn. You're going to be trying to get uh, six g rubies first. If you do, you will trigger the end of the game. All other players will finish that round, and then whoever has the most rubies will be the winner. If there is a tie, you are going to be turning in your goods. Now, unused goods are worth three lira each. Unused crystals are worth two lira each. And then you have your leftover lira, you'll add all that up, and whoever has the most money will break the tie. If there is still a tie, the tied players share the victory, and that is how you play Istanbul the Dice Game. Okay, so that was Istanbul the Dice Game. Let's talk about the components. Now, the artwork in the game is, is great. Um, lots of great color and um, wonderful art throughout the different boards and the cards that you have. I love the gems. I think the gems are a quality component, and now you've added crystals to it as well. Uh, really good component. The tiles in the game that you have the special player powers that you can get, they're thick, and the main board is also very easy to read. The player aid cards are well laid out. Uh, they're thin. I wish maybe those would have been a thicker component, but they don't really need to be. Again, they're just player aid cards, which, you know, once you've played enough times, you pretty much know what all of the different uh, actions are anyway. Uh, the cards that you can get, they're small. Uh, I wish those were a little bit larger, but that's a minor thing. Overall, I think the components are, again, very well done. So let's talk about the gameplay. And if you've played Istanbul, you're probably wondering, is this a faithful adaptation of that game? You know what, I would say yes. You know, as far as 
porting it to a, a dice game? Certainly. Now, there is less player interaction in this game. You, you know, aren't having to go around and, and place your workers down along the board to take various actions. Uh, and you don't have to worry about running into, you know, the other player's main character and having to pay them. So there is less interaction, but it still feels like a race. It tends to be more of a race because of the fact that, um, you know, you're trying to collect the goods and the coins that you need to be able to get the, the gems, but without the, again, that player interaction. The color scheme and the symbology in the game certainly have a familiar feel from, you know, the original Istanbul. I like that you have special powers uh, through the tiles that you can get because it, it makes it kind of a semi-engine building. You can collect these tiles and then be able to get certain income or do certain actions during your turn that can help uh, uh, speed up the progress of the game and, and your chances of winning. And I, I think those are, are a neat thing to have in, in the game. And I like the cards that are in the game, especially if you have to choose multiple cards, you know, or you, you get to draw multiple cards and then choose uh, which one you're going to take. Or are you going to use the one that uh, can help you, but helps everyone else a little bit, or try to go, you, you know, use the other tiles or the other card that you, that you have. I think that's a neat addition to the game. I like the fact that it makes you make a, a little bit of a decision there uh, from time to time. Now the gameplay is quick and this game is very easy to teach. You certainly don't need to know how to play Istanbul to play the, the dice game. Yeah, you'd probably help a little bit because of the symbology and kind of the goal of what you're trying to do, but it, it isn't necessary. The game is very, very easy to teach. The box says that it's 20 to 40 minutes. 20 minutes is probably a stretch, but it's definitely playable in, in under an hour. The luck of this game is mostly mitigated too. Um, with all the different actions that you can take using the dice, they, they've done a good job of setting it up so that you do have you really don't have wasted dice and you know besides that the game I mean it is a dice game so you do know going in that luck certainly could be a factor but I think they've done a good job of, of mitigating uh, the, the luck in the game okay so as far as the replayability is concerned I think this is where the game could have the most trouble because I could see this game feeling uh, a little repetitive after a while. I mean, after you've seen all the different tile cards that are out there, um, you've seen the different cards that you can draw, the game could start to feel a little little repetitive. Now, I, I haven't grown tired of it, and I've played it multiple times so far, and I really do enjoy it. I think this is a very good dice version adaptation of Istanbul. I enjoy playing it. I do worry about its its longevity and, and its lifespan, but if you want the feel of Istanbul in a quick dice roller, then I think this game is for you. For me, I give this game a seven. Now, if you've uh, enjoyed this review, please hit the thumbs up, uh, leave a nice comment, and subscribe to our channel. And once again, I thank you for stopping by. Thank you for visiting the Arch Gaming Network. For more great content, check us out at archgamingnetwork.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.